Amen. Hallelujah. He'll understand the better by and by. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Standing on your feet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us prepare our hearts and mind, praise God, to receive the man of God for the night. Pastor Arthur Miller, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, lift them hands in this place and let's bless them. Come on. Come on, if you're blessed for a few minutes, it'll only take a few moments. Come on. Where are the worshipers, where are the worshipers that will reach beyond where they are physically, mentally, and bless our God. Come on. Come on, come on. Give him praise. Because he's worthy. Come on, has he done anything for anybody in this house tonight? Lord, we honor you tonight with the fruit of our lips. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and into your courts with praise. But God, there's a few in here tonight that ain't satisfied with the outer courts. Come on, let's enter in. Come on, let's enter in. Come on, worship is the key. Worship is the key. Where are the worshipers tonight? Where are the worshipers? Come on, come on. I won't be before you long, but let's just worship him just for a few moments. God, we honor you. Lord, we adore you, Jesus. God, we give you our all tonight. Lord, you're wonderful. You're mighty. Awesome counselor. Prince of Peace. Our help. Our healer. Our way maker. Our man of war. Come on, somebody. Just bless him tonight. Come on. Come on. Make him bigger than your problem. Make him bigger than your trial. David said, oh, magnify. Magnify means to increase or to make bigger. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name in this place together. I bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me. I bless it with everything in me and forget not his benefits. Come on, one more time. Just lift those hands and say something sweet to him. Come on, he deserves the praise. He deserves the praise. God, we honor you. We thank you for another opportunity to be here in the house of the Lord on tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. Amen. We are here. Amen. And I'm thankful to God to be here. It's been a long time since I've been back to the big house. Amen. Amen. But we're thankful to be here tonight. We're thankful to God for, amen, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to thank God. Come on. Just one more time. Just one more time. Come on, put them hands together real big and bless him. Come on, the King of kings and Lord of lords, our salvation, our healing, our way maker, our strong tower, our refuge. Tonight, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. And to our, our fearless leader, amen, the, the honorable chief apostle, amen, Daryl Glenn McCoy, we do thank the Lord. Amen for him. Amen. And his lady elect, Sister Dorothy. Amen. And all these great men of God, these preachers and amen and elders, amen, and different ones that's been holding up, amen, the wall, amen, and standing on the wall and keeping it together here in Jacksonville. We thank the Lord for them and all of their elect ladies, amen, and all of the, amen, prophets, prophetess, deacons, mothers we do thank god for you amen you and especially you amen um get on in the way amen um, 
I saw my mama come in. I want to thank God for my mama. Amen. Anybody who knows my mama knows she don't come out this time of night. <laughs> my mama ain't going nowhere this time of night, but I appreciate her being <laughs> I appreciate you being here tonight, mama. Love you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But here we are, amen, um, tonight, amen, we have an assignment, amen, and we're just going to, amen, be mindful, amen, of what the Lord has brought us here to do, amen, I left, y'all better grab your Bibles and follow along with me, y'all saw I came up here with two phones, I ain't got a Bible up here, don't trust, amen, your soul with anybody, I don't care how much you love them or trust them, amen, get your Bible out and make sure I'm reading what's in there. Amen. The, the hour is, I mean, the hour is crazy, and people are doing crazy things. I've seen it. Amen. You can't trust everybody with your soul. This is the most important thing, amen, in the world. Amen. So let's grab our Bibles tonight. We're going to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Amen. Y'all will help me preach. It won't take me long. Amen. 836. For record time tonight. <laughs> amen. But we were using the Lord for amen, a word on tonight. Romans chapter 12, very familiar passage of scripture. Romans 12, and we're going to start at verse number 1. Amen. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Y'all know what reasonable means? That means it's not going above and beyond. This is not anything extra. This is not something that you, you get points for. I, I remember I told my son one day, he said, with well, that, I cleaned my room. I did this. You shouldn't look for a reward for things that you were supposed to do in the first place. And people are looking to be patted on the back and rewarded for doing what's reasonable. Amen. Thank God. Owe us something because we came to church. You owe us something because we, you know, we sing or we preach. Or God, don't, we, God don't owe us nothing. I owe him everything. Amen. Me giving my body as a living sacrifice, amen, is just my reasonable service. Amen. Something about, amen, when, when you talk about a sacrifice, one thing about a sacrifice, a sacrifice, the purpose of the sacrifice is locked up in the owner of the sacrifice. Its only purpose is to serve the will of its owner. Amen. And it's not me that belongs to myself. I no longer belong to myself, but I've been bought with a price. So for me to die that he might live through me, that's just my reasonable service. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable acceptable and perfect will of God. And if I was to uh, give a title tonight to this message, it would, I would call it the invisible enemy. The invisible enemy, your mind. Your mind is an invisible enemy enemy. I want to read this, amen, in another translation in the Message Bible just for amen, a, a little bit of, uh, um, I guess, clarity and expounding on it. It says, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you always dragging down the level of, uh, dra dragging down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. God wants us to, the only way that we'll be able to be changed 
Uh, it, it's not going to happen unless we get it changed up here. For so long we've been taught, you know, to pray. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I've always said this. I, I pray all the time. I pray every day. I, I, I pray sometimes without even under, knowing that I'm praying, I, that we pray so much. Anybody in here with me, you know, you riding down the street in your car and before you know it, you realize you're praying and didn't even realize you started. Amen. So, so I believe in prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. And we've been taught to pray, but we have not been taught to think. Amen. And what God wants to do, the way that we're going to be uh, 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 changed is with the renewing of our mind. Amen. He told us not to be conformed, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Anybody need to be transformed? Anybody need to be changed? The only way that happens is if our mind is changed. And, and what happens is because we've learned things for so long, we've placed God in a box. We got him in a box, and we feel unfulfilled. And if y'all help me, I'm just going to build for a second. Let me build this real quick, and we're going to say what we got to say, and we out of here. We're unfulfilled because uh, uh, the relationship that we have with God is not with the big G God, but it's with the little G God that we've created in our image and after our likeness. So we're unfulfilled because he can't do anything for us because he's limited by our mentality. He's limited by our mentality. He's limited by what we, amen, have given him power to do. People don't want to believe, but we create our own gods in our own image and after our likeness, and then we get mad at God for what he doesn't perform after we've created him. Problem is we, 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 we're not serving Jehovah, we're serving the God that we created. And another problem with that is when we do that, we subject God to humanity. Frailness, mistakes, weakness, lies, things that aren't God at all. Things that our flesh can on, only our flesh is capable of, we put God in that type of a box. We got him encased in flesh, in this flesh. I'm going to get finished here in just a second. Am I helping anybody already? And, and, and this is the thing. You can't get healing from a God. You can't heal yourself. You, and, and see, we get angry after we've created this God because this is what we do. We limit him and we handcuff him and we lock him up to where he can't do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us because we, 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 the only thing that happens is we, if, if you can imagine it you can, and you've created him to do it, then that ain't God. If you can, if you can create it in your mind and you try to put it in that God, he can, he, that cannot be God. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. So we created him in our image and after our likeness. And the power he has is delegated power. Because truth of the matter is we have stuff in our life that we don't want God messing with. So we give him power to touch the stuff that we don't, that we won't touch, but then we keep around the stuff. But some of us, we so in love with our mess and our dysfunctional self. Hey, but come on, somebody. We in love with the stuff in the mess that God trying to separate us from. Amen. And we find ourselves can't be delivered, can't be set free. Amen. So we're depressed and messed up and we're going through all kind of anxiety because we can't get delivered from an entanglement that we put ourselves in. And, a God, and we don't have a God that can deliver us because the God that we serve is the God of our own creation. Uh, amen. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. You got to understand how powerful your mind is. He said, be not conformed to this world. Amen. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, he said, don't be conformed because, see, one thing about conforming and being conformed, conform is just a passive term. Conforming is passive. All you got to do is be present and conform and adjust to whatever it is in the atmosphere that you're in. Amen. In order to conform, but to transform, it takes some active breaking down tearing down and restructuring and rebuilding amen but when you're conforming amen you're sitting there and saying you know what whatever the atmosphere gives to me that's what i'm going to take i'm going to behave after the amen after the nature of the atmosphere that i come into amen but in order to be transformed he told us amen we got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you cannot conform in other words amen a person that conforms comes into amen a room and lets the room set the temperature in them amen but a person that 
transforms is a person that comes in the room and the temperature gets set, amen, when they step on the scene, amen, we talk about thermometers and thermostats all the time, amen, but I don't want to be a thermometer, I want to be a thermostat when I step in the room, amen, I want every demon endeavor to be subject, amen, to the power that lives in me because greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in this world, and it doesn't matter what's coming, no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper in every tongue that rise up against me in judgment, thou shalt condemn, this is a heritage of God's children, those that aren't conforming and compromising, amen, just to make sure that the God that they created will still be happy. We're trying to make a God that we created happy. He said, be not conformed or don't allow yourself to adjust, amen, to where you are. Amen. Well, do I have any folks in here, amen, that says, I will not conform. I'm going to be a pioneer. Every room I step in is going to adjust to me. Amen. I'm not going to conform. I'm not going to let, amen, the world dictate who I am and what I do, amen, and how I live. Amen. I got a charge to keep, amen, and not a people, not a person, not a church, not a woman, not a man, not a child, but a God to glory. I don't know about you, amen, but I'm asking God every day, God, teach me your ways, because everything with every fiber of my being, I want to please you, amen, every time, amen, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not asking God, amen, to order, you understand, I'm asking him to order my steps, but if I get his mind, my steps will be ordered, amen, if I get his mind, amen, you ain't got to worry about me loving, if I get his mind, you ain't got to worry about me being mad and hateful and vengeful, you ain't got to worry about me being bitter, if I can get his mind. See this invisible energy. This mind that we got. You understand? It's got us thinking. It's got us bitter. It's got us mad. It's got us angry. It's got us backbiting and talking about folks. But God said if we want to be transformed, your whole mindset got to be changed. Change your mind. Change your life. But if you sit around with the same mind, can I tell you something? If you walk up out of here tonight, amen, with the same mind that you got, amen, it's just like giving an alcoholic or a drug addict. You can take them off the streets and you you can put them in a brand new suit, but until their mind change, amen, they'll, you'll find them laying right on the side of the road, amen, laying outside looking for drugs, amen, in that tailor-made suit that you bought them, they'll be walking around, amen, in them exotic skin shoes, looking for some more drugs, looking for something else, looking for another hit, until their mind is changed, until they get their minds focused, he said, they keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon me, see, we don't think that God, see, we got to understand something about God. Everybody been talking about how spiritual he is. Amen. But if we're made in his image and after his likeness, then he has to have an intellect too. He has to have a mind. He has to have thoughts. So if he created us with that, why do we shy away from it? Don't question God. Listen, let me tell you something. Amen. God created us with a, with a mind. He created us to be inquisitive. You understand? So why in the world would he be mad if we were trying to wrap our mind around something that we we can't fully grasp because the principles of God, they're always bigger than our mind. They're always bigger amen, than our mentality. So he ain't going to be in his feelings because you decided to think about something because you're trying to get your mind wrapped around it. He wants you to think. He wants you to think because let me tell you something. For so long, we got strongholds. We got strongholds in our mind. We got a stronghold, amen, in our mind that got us messed up and backed up and locked in, amen, and it's got us in a place that sometimes even when God himself speaks through his word because we heard it somewhere else first and adopted it as truth it became a stronghold and we won't even allow God's word to penetrate it so we stuck amen because we can't accept God's word for what it truly is that's why I go back I look at everything that I've ever learned are you listening the Bible tells me the study to show thyself approved you hear me what I'm saying every time every time I open up a Bible even if I look at something amen a message that I preached years ago. I go back and look at it again because the evolution of my mind, I'm not growing away from God. I'm growing into him. Are you listening? See, children, when they're growing up, they don't keep the same mind from the time they was a child to the time that they're an adult. If they did, you'd think something was wrong with them. They'll tell you, say, that they're mentally handicapped. Am I right about it? How many of us are spiritually handicapped?
handicapped because we don't study the word. Folks can come by and tell us anything. Folks can come by, amen, and give us any kind of word and we just accepting it because they stand behind a desk. Can I help somebody in here? We got to get our minds together because because what the stuff that I've grown through over these last couple of years, amen, if I didn't study the word of God, amen, if I didn't get my mind right, if my mind, if I wasn't mentally strong, I would have lost it. You hear me what I'm saying? Listen to what I'm telling you in here. You're not looking at somebody. You don't know what they're talking about. I'm not telling you something that I read in a book. I'm not telling you something that I saw on television. I'm telling you from experience what I went through. I lost my best friend and my brother within a month of each other. And in the same time, about three months later, I went through a divorce. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. I went through. I didn't understand at the time. I thought I was all right. Amen. But when I went through a depression, see, folks don't like to talk about depression in the church. See, I didn't understand that you could be preaching the gospel. Amen. Preaching to folks and be depressed. I didn't understand you could be laying hands on folks and be depressed. I'm sitting in the church. I'm laying hands on folks and I need somebody to lay their hands on me. I'm praying for folks and I need prayer myself. I'm asking folks. I'm wrapping my arms around folks and giving them strength and I need to strength myself. I'm talking about our preach and then I go home and I cry myself to sleep. Ain't nobody there. I'm talking about I come home from whatever I was doing during the day and I go and lock up in my room. I wouldn't answer my phone. All I do is watch TV and read my Bible because I knew the only thing that was going to bring me out is if I can get that word locked in my mind because in the darkest hour, there ain't no time to crack open the Bible. In the darkest hour, when the enemy come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard. That word is got to be resting in you. That word got to already be in you. So when it comes in, you already got some waiting on the devil. So I guess what? You know what happened when I came? When he came in, guess what I told him? I told him, guess what? Greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. And no weapon formed against me will prosper. You understand what I'm saying? I was going through so much stress, depression, and anxiety. But I told the devil, look at here. I don't care. Come what will obey. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light of my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. The devil thought he had me, but I got away. Though he came in one way, he had to flee seven ways. I came to help somebody here today that's dealing with depression. I came to help somebody today that's dealing with mind balance. They can't go to sleep at night. They don't want to wake up because guess what? They don't want to deal with the torment. They feel like... There's folks right in here tonight that's dealing with depression. Uh, you ain't got to say nothing. Uh, because I've been there, I can see it all in your face. Uh, because I've been there, I can see it. You hear me what I'm saying? Uh, and there was a time uh, that I thought I had cleared it. I thought I had got over it. Uh, amen. But guess what? Uh, I looked back around uh, and here it was creeping up again. Uh, I found myself uh, isolating myself. But can I tell you something? Uh, that's the worst thing you can do in an hour of trouble like that. Uh, don't isolate yourself. Uh, Get around some strength. Find some folks that know how to get a hold of God. You better have your prep partner. When the time comes, you better have somebody on your side that's ready to go to war. Amen. Want to chase a thousand to put ten thousand to flight. Two is better than one. You better find your accountability and a prayer partner. And you better call. You better find somebody that ain't going to be with them little cute prayers. Oh, Lord, bless them. You better find somebody that knows how to call upon the name of the Lord. I needed somebody to call and say, Lord, turn his captivity. Lord, fix his mind. God, get in his mind. Help him with his... Hallelujah. Let me get down here. The truth of the matter is we're dealing with stuff in our mind that's got us messed up. Anybody in here, you ain't, got, you ain't got to lift your hands. But I'm talking about this thing so powerful till you want to run away from yourself. I love me. But there was a time I said, man, I wish I could be anybody but me right now. 
That's how serious it was. I would rather be anybody but me. God, please release me. And see, I know before, I, I, would, I would say, when I heard people were depressed, I said, man, you just got to get a little more Jesus. Huh? That's all, that's, all the, that's all the help I had for him. You know, I, I'll be praying for you, but now, amen, anybody ever went through something in your life, amen, and when you was going through, you had to pray. You asked somebody to pray for you, amen, and you knew by the look on their face, they didn't really understand, amen, that you needed them to drop it. I don't need a prayer. I don't need you to go home and just remember me in your prayer time. I need you to drop everything you're doing right now and lift your hand. I'm, I'm talking about joining hands and put some hands on me. Right now, I'm going through something and I can't wait. I got a 911. Anybody ever had a 911? You had to break open your prayer closet again. You didn't, you didn't cry and you didn't ask folks. And because of your strength, people will look at you and say they'll be alright. But you crying and you're going through and you asking God, please, how much longer shall I suffer this? God rescue me. Don't deliver me over to the hands of my enemies. I don't want my enemy to laugh at my persecution. But God help me. Something about a good mind somebody having the right mind in that situation my mind when I was saying Lord I felt like I was going down for the counter amen but something about the word of God when it's stuck in you it's stuck in you amen and I don't care what it looked like I didn't care I told him I said bless be God who know how to always cause me to triumph I told the devil I'm more I'm not just a conqueror but I'm more than a conqueror I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me I'm not letting the devil get the victory because I'm going through a little the hell. I'm lifting my hands. You know, we used to say back in the days, while I'm going through, I'm not going to lift up. Amen. The white flag and surrender. I'm not going to wave the white flag, but I'm going to lift up the blood shade banner and say, for God, I live and for God, I die. I bless him with everything in me because he's worthy. Our mindset, mentality, our mentality, the only way we're going to be transformed is if our minds get transformed. It's going to have to be a changing of our mind. There was a young boy. He was in the yard playing baseball by himself. You always play baseball by yourself. You knew you had a, you had a ball. You lob it. Take a little swing at it. Well, this young boy he was out there by himself. Now, he was the pitcher, he was the batter, and he was the announcer and the umpire. So he threw the ball up in the air. And when he threw it in there, he said, I'm the greatest batter in the world. And he swung, and he missed. Strike one, he said. So he got himself together. He picked the ball up. He threw it in the air again. See, I'm the greatest batter in the world. Swung, and he missed. He couldn't believe it because, you know, I mean, I should be able to time this. I am pitching. But he, so he looked at the ball, checked the bat out. Okay, everything. Copacetic. So he, he got up there. He threw the ball in the air. He said, I'm the greatest pitcher in the, I'm the greatest catcher. I'm the greatest hitter in the history of baseball. And he swung with everything he had. And he missed again. He struck out. He struck out. So he stood there for a minute. He didn't know his mom and daddy was watching him. So he stood there for a minute and got himself together. And he turned around, started walking toward his mom and them. He said, I just struck out the greatest hitter in the history of baseball. I must be the best pitcher in the world. It's all about mindset. He was pitching too. <laughs> the problem is that's where a lot of us walk away when we see failure, but we don't turn, we don't understand that we got to take our minds and turn failure into 
into winning. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Amen. When you get your mind situated, when you get your mind right, you'll take even a loss and make it good. That's how all things work together for your good. Amen. It ain't good when it start out. Amen. But because you're a child of the most high, guess what happens? Even though it's bad, it's working out for your good. It didn't look good for Joseph when he was in the pit. Amen. Or you understand? Or prison. Amen. Or the dungeon. It didn't look for him, look good for him then. But all that worked together for his good because it put him around people. Amen. It put him in a place where he needed to be. Some of y'all, you got to understand, amen, that your failure, even a fall. See, we look at falls and we look at falls as a bad thing, but a fall is still forward mobility, forward progress. <laughs> a fall is progress. I, I, I don't care. You understand? Amen. The greatest success stories, amen, have failure all along the way. Amen. It's not about failure. It's not about the times when you fall. It's about how many times you can get up. Amen. I just need to be, be able to get up one more time than I fail. Amen. And I can make it. Is there anybody in here? All you got to do is just get up one more time. Amen. If I fail seven times, I need to get up eight. Is there anybody in here? God got your back. Amen. But you got to be the person that's saying, you know what? I'm not going to let that sit mindset. I'm not going to let the mindset to make me think, amen, that I lost God because I made a mistake. I'm, you understand? Some of us, we get, uh, we get knocked off because uh, guess what happens? Uh, when we make a mistake, we feel like we can't go to God. Uh, when he said there's now therefore no condemnation uh, to them that are in Christ. Uh, amen. But we got a stronghold that tells us we can't even ask him for nothing uh, because we made a mistake. Uh, we just like that child. You understand? With a child, amen, if they mess up in school, they're not coming home and asking you Amen. For a bicycle because their mentality says because I've done wrong. Amen. They're not going to do it. But some, some, me personally, it has nothing to do with that. I love my child. I don't care how many times they mess up. You hear me what I'm saying? Amen. I was talking amen, about my baby girl. There's something about her. Amen. You understand? I love all my children but my baby. Amen. The baby girl, she's 17 now. Amen. She's growing into a young lady. Amen. And I'm talking to her, you know. Amen. And, and as I, amen, and get to know her even more. Amen. Because it's just me and her in the house now. It's something about her aura. Something about who she is and her spirit. I just love who she is. I can't tell her no. Whatever she want to do. Amen. I'm going to break my neck to try to do it. Even if I don't feel like it. She called me so she tell me. Sometimes it's late at night. 11, 12 o'clock. Daddy, can we go to the store? Amen. I don't feel like going. Amen. But I find myself sitting on the edge of the bed trying to find my slides. You understand? So I can get downstairs and take her where she needs to go. Amen. I love her that much. Amen. Now, I'm not telling you she's perfect. I'm not telling you she's perfect. She makes mistakes. She does little stuff. And I know I ain't crazy. I know what 17 year old children doing and trying to do. Amen. I ain't saying she's perfect. But there's something about her that I don't care what kind of mistakes she make. I'm trying to be right there in pocket to make sure that she don't do any more damage to herself than she has to. So if she get in trouble, I don't care what kind of mess she found herself in. She can call on me and guess what? Daddy gonna come running up. So I'm coming to tell somebody tonight if me as an evil person living in this sinful flesh if I can give my children those kind of good gifts. Amen. If God, God said if your child asks you for bread you gonna give him a serpent. Well if you, amen, as evil men can give your child amen great gifts. How much more shall your heavenly father how much more? That's why we ain't got to take no thought for food and raiment. You hear me what I'm saying? He's already got our back. Don't let your mistake stop you from reaching out. Some of y'all today, the enemy got you at a catch-22 because you made a mistake and you think God is through with you. But can I tell you something? God ain't done with you yet. God said, I'm coming back. He said, listen. He said, in the last days, there was going to be a great falling away. He said, but there was going to be a great restoration. So you know what he's doing? He's calling his children from the four corners of the earth from the north, the south, the west, and the east. And he's turning them back. He's turning them back. He's turning the children's hearts back to the Father. He's bringing us back. He's bringing a great restoration back to the house of God. Is there anybody in here? That's why I'm telling you today, your mistakes, if you can just get your mind wrapped around the fact that God is into you, that he loves you more than you ever could know. He didn't choose you to sit you on the bench. You were his number one draft pick. He loves you. He's into you. He wants
want to make sure everything about you. You want to perfect those things which concern you. You want those things that you that's got your mind messed up. You want to turn all of that around. You want to fix your life. But all we got to do is submit ourselves. If we'll humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he'll exalt us in due time. We just got to come down from where we are and say, God, it's not my mother, it's not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. I'm the one that's standing in the need of poor. I ain't blaming it on nobody else. I'm not passing the book. God, I'm messed up. God, I need you. I'm like David. Oh God, have mercy upon me, oh God. According to that tender mercies, according to the multitude of that tender mercies, brought up my transgression. He said, it's against thee and thee alone have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. He said, purge me with hyssop and I'll be clean. Wash me, wash me, wash me, wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. Make me to know. He said, listen, he said, make me to know your joy again. He said, then will I teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted unto you. In other words, God, if you fix this thing for me, I'll run for you. God, if you fix this thing for me, if you get my mind right, I'll help other folks get their mind right. He told Peter, he said, when you converted, strengthen your brother. I'm trying to strengthen somebody tonight. I'm trying to give somebody the power to overcome your trouble. I'm trying to give somebody the power. I believe it was S.C. Johnson. He preached the message. Your trouble is in trouble. I come tonight to tell somebody that your trouble is in trouble. You may be troubled on every side, but the God we serve, he got our backs. Somebody to lift your hands in this place and shout, my trouble is in trouble. Because we don't want to think, we take ourselves out of the equation and we put everything on God to fix. See, God will do, if we handle the possible, if we handle the possible, God will step in and handle anything that's impossible. That's all we got to do is handle the part that's possible. See, that's not his, that's not his department. What you can do, that's your department. That's for you to do it. Amen. Mother may have and father may have, but God bless the child that gets his own and has his own. God looking for somebody that's got a pulse. God looking for somebody that's invested in their own deliverance. God got somebody with a mindset. God wants somebody with a mindset saying, listen, it don't matter. Come what will, come what will or may sink or swim, live or die, creep or crawl, trip or fall. For God I live. And for, he's looking for those with the right mindset that's going to believe him in any situation that's not going to tie his ability to a mistake that you made. Who's not going to tie his ability to some mess that you done got caught up in. Some entanglement. His ability don't stop because you messed up. He's still God. So guess what? In the middle of it all, he still has the answer. And I don't know about you. I'm not going to get in a place where he's that close to me. I'll be like that woman in the coast of Tyler inside of her. Lord Jesus, Lord thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I'm grievously vexed in my mind. I wish I had somebody in here. Is there anybody that said, Lord, anybody ever had to ask the Lord just to have mercy? I didn't even know what to go after. But I just said, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on my children. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my ministry. Have mercy on my mind. God, just have mercy because I'm grievously vexed and I can't serve you if my mind ain't right. I got to get a mind right. I got to get my mind right to serve you. I got to get my mind right because I can't preach to folks if I'm continually bleeding. I can't keep preaching and bleeding at the same time. God, you got to do something. I'm calling you at your word. You said if I come before you, you're faithful and just to forgive me of my sin. You said come let us reason together though your sins be as scarlet. I'll make them white as snow. I'll cleanse you and I can use you again if you're willing and able or you're eat the spirit let me let me tell you something we try to make everything so spooky and I'm, I'm closing here got this one last point we try to make everything so spooky when it comes to God the Holy Ghost ooh, the Holy Spirit ooh, but when you look up the spirit in the in the scriptures, if you look in the Greek, what it's talking about, it comes from a, a, a word, pneuma, 
just like pneumonia, pneuma. It's the rational soul or vital principle of mental disposition. Mental disposition. So the spirit is a mental disposition. It's a thought process. It's a mindset. The Holy Spirit is nothing but a mindset that's up for you to live holy. It's a mindset to live holy. And we got a bunch of people, the reason that we can't do it is because we don't have that holy mindset. You, oh, that's why he didn't tell us, amen, to live holy. You know what he told us? To be holy. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. You can't do nothing if you ain't first becoming. Amen. If, I'm a, if I have happy moments, I, you understand, that don't mean that I'm a happy person. That just means that I had a happy moment. Amen. But if I'm happy at my core, amen, then I'm a happy person. Amen. So guess what? So, so, so if I'm a happy person and happy things happen, the, after the happy thing happened, I'm right back to being sad again. I'm not being, I'm not living happy. I'm being happy at the time. But if I see the same thing with holiness. He didn't tell us to live holy. He said be holy. Amen. And you can have holy moments because we know how to come to church and we know how to throw our hands up in the air. We even know a little tongue to throw in there every now and then. We got a little dance. You understand? We got little holy moments. Amen. That we have in our life. But when it truly comes to being holy, oh my God, I ain't got to be in church if I'm if I really am holy. I ain't got to be in church. Sometimes I'm in my car in tears. Just start rolling down my face. Because I'm starting to thank him for his mercy and his grace. It has nothing to do, amen, with being in church. It's because I'm holy at my core. So no matter how many mistakes I make, I'm trying to find my way back to him. I don't care how many times I mess up. I'm trying to find my way back to him. You can talk about me if you want to. But late in the midnight hour, you'll find my face buried in the pillar asking God, please, God, don't let me, don't let me continue on like this. Forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry. Is there anybody in here got that holy mindset? I'm talking about that Holy Spirit that lives in you, that teaches you and guides you. How in the world, amen, if some ghost, some spooky ghost going to teach you something? It's a mindset. The Holy Ghost is a mindset that's teaching you and leading you and guiding you into all truth. Amen. He said, listen, he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. He said, the way I'm going, you can't be, there you may be also, but you can't come right now. He said, I'm going to prepare a place. But I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm getting ready to send you a holy mind. I'm going to send you a holy mind that's going to teach you and lead you and guide you into all truth. He told his disciples, I'm getting ready to send something that's going to cause you to be holy. You've been walking around some holy stuff while I've been here. But when I send this back, you'll be then you will be here sitting around waiting for me to lay hands. You'll go and lay hands yourself. You'll see a man living at the gate and tell him, silver and gold have I known but such as I have. I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take up your bed and walk. Stay here till you be endued with power from on high. I'll teach you how to pray. I'll teach you how to lay hands. I'll give you a people. To... Oh God. I'm almost through. I'm through. In other words, Jesus said, I'm going, but I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send something back to you that's going to help you. In other words, I'm going and I'm leaving. So physically, I'm leaving, but I'm going to send you my mind. Ooh. I'm going to send you my mind. My God, let me have. That's why I said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He's trying to give you his mind. Because if I can give, if you can get my mind, if you can think like me, he can say, if, if, I, if you abide in me, if my words, my words, my thoughts, my words and my thoughts abide in you, then you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. You know why? Because if I got his mind, I'm not going to ask anything that's against his will. So guess what? When I get his mind, I can and say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and not doubt. And guess what? I'll have the thing that I say because I got his mind. The invisible enemy is the mind. We've limited our minds to believing that God is one dimensional. We serve a multifaceted God who can love, whoop, and forgive at the same time. We serve a God whose mind is so powerful, he sees the big picture. 
He's not looking at that mistake you made today and counting you out. He's saying that's a part of the process. The fact that they touched that stove, the fact that that baby touched the stove when they was little, that didn't kill them. It didn't disqualify them. All it did was make them aware that stoves was hotter. So the next time they walk up to the stove, you ain't even got to tell them. They'll walk up and tell you they self hot. Hot. Every time they see one, hot. Hot. He trying to help you out now. Hot. Let this spirit or let this mind be in you. He told us, he said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our war warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down what? Every imagination and what? The thought, all us. We cast down this weapon that we got, it's mental. God been showing me these last two years the weapon, the strongest weapon we gonna have is a mindset. With our mind stayed on Him, we got the right mindset. We gonna serve Him. We got the right mindset. Ain't nobody got to tell you to come to church. Got the right mindset. Ain't nobody got to tell you to tie. Got the right mindset. Ain't, got, ain't nobody got to tell you to forgive and have mercy and love. You got the right mindset. Ain't nobody got to tell you that. Amen. You, when you get that right mindset, everything about you will change. Got to be, I was, I was talking to Apostle the other day. I told him the only way I was able to make it is because I was mentally tough. Because this is the thing. This ain't the first time I've been through something that many people would have ran and, 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 and you understand that would have threw it. I mean, just ready to throw their whole life away. This ain't my first rodeo. Don't mean it was any less painful. But if I wasn't mentally tough, I would have threw in the towel a long time ago. I would have gave up a long time ago. You know, sometimes people look and they say, Lord, have mercy. I don't know how you keep doing this. It's a mindset. You understand? No, 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 no boasting or bragging in myself at all. Don't get me wrong. It's, I know that he kept my mind. I know he kept my mind. I know he strengthened me. I know he started, he began to reveal himself to me as I was going through. He reveals himself in the trial. You'll never be able to recognize him. He always reveals himself. He always, he has to reveal himself in order for you to see him. Even when, 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 when uh, the Pharisees, when they were coming to take him, they couldn't, they didn't know who he was. They couldn't tell, they didn't know who he was. They didn't, they, they, they wouldn't have known. Judas had to go and kiss him for them to know who he was. Because he wasn't one trying to stand out and show off. He was one that you know, he wasn't, he wasn't recognized. He wasn't one that's, you know, uh, sitting over here in some special place. You understand? He was standing right there with his disciples when he walked up. He had to betray him with a kiss. He had to be revealed. And that's what he does for us. I, I, I can tell you some of the greatest revelation I've ever got came through trial. It didn't come when I, you understand, it didn't come sitting on the pew, it didn't come all the time while I was on my knees or in the word. It came while I was in the furnace of affliction, while I was going through and didn't understand why. I ain't tell you I understood every step, but I knew I'd understand it better by and by. Did we help somebody tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, our minds, Jesus. Lord, strengthen our minds. Strengthen our minds. Strengthen our minds. Strengthen our minds, Jesus. Lord, there's so many people in here tonight that's, that's dreading going home because they know after they leave the presence of the people, Lord, that they got to fight with these spirits. They got to fight with this stuff tonight, Lord. Please help. Please help, Lord. God help. Uh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
I don't take it for granted. Lord, what you've done. God, I'm praying, please. God, there's something that I said, Lord. You said you send your word and heal. Father, I've done what I can to obey you tonight, Lord. I pray, God, that somebody, Lord, that's that word has pierced somebody's heart, Lord, and they'll forever be searching, God, for your mind, God, in every situation. Lord, you said that I, in our everyday being, our ups, our uprising, our going to sleep, and our eating, and everything that we do, Lord, let us transform our minds that we might do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Help us, Lord. Bless each and every one under the sound of my voice, Lord. Tonight, I speak healing to the hearts and minds of your people on tonight. I speak peace. God, there's people in here tonight that ain't slept good in months and years. Lord, I pray that you give them rest tonight, God. And I pray that they don't need some kind of supplement or some, something to help them sleep, Lord. But you give them peace tonight, knowing, God, that you're in their corner. God, that you got their back, God. And you're not going to let them fall by the wayside. But, God, you got them right here in the hollow of your hand. Send peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a great big hand. He's worthy. Is he worthy? Just one more time. Just give him a real quick wave off. And we get ready to let you go. Got to get this offering in the way. Amen. I want everybody that can and will, amen, get a seed in your hand. Amen. Send my offering. 